Hey Man Cavians, this is Bob from De Bob's Man Cave. It's not about end scale today, it's all about the man cave. And what we're doing today has nothing to do with trains. What? De Bob's not going to talk about trains today? Nope. I'm talking about computers. And what kind of computers? My workstation that I use to make my videos on for this YouTube channel and play some games on every once in a while or surf the internet for trains and all those other little things. So let's go take a look. There's other things inside a man cave. And in this one I happen to have a computer that needs to be fixed. It needs a new heart. It needs new legs, needs new arms, needs new blood. Here's why. I've got this computer and I put it together, built it from scratch from the ground up in 2012. Five and a half years ago. It needs an overhaul. Bad. Why? Because I'm having problems with software. Specifically Pinnacle Studio 21 and all the previous versions before that just don't seem to work on this installation of Windows 10 because I got a Jury rig the whole thing just to get it to work and operate right and If this still don't work, I'm switching to another program because I've had it done mm -mm. No more Pinnacle if this can't work They've lost my business if I can't get this to work after formatting a hard drive and installing a fresh clean copy on there but I can't just format the hard drive I gotta upgrade everything else you know you gotta have that new train it just came out so what do I do needs a new processor need a faster processor need faster RAM it all has to go in a new motherboard because the old one ain't going to fit that processor or the RAM. Bought a new 500 gig SSD drive. And I also hooking up the blood in this computer with water cooling. And so I'm adding in a drain system, putting in the right size radiator that I need, putting in a better pump that's smaller and more compact and made to fit in to a case a lot better than the what I have now. My pump is just kind of sitting there on a little foam pad so it doesn't make noise bouncing around on the power supply. You know, I got jury rigged some stuff here, so, and I'll show you that. But once I get all this stuff put together, things hopefully should work better. So I'm going to show you the pieces that I purchased and uh, start putting this thing together. Let's go take a look at what I got. So I've got an ASUS motherboard, the Crosshair 6 Hero in Wi-Fi edition, which means I can hook up Wi-Fi uh, connection to the internet or my wireless network, or I can also hook up my uh, normal wired connection, which I probably will use that. In case I ever move this computer to somewhere else, I can still hook it up wirelessly uh, in the house. Uh, if you have never seen this before, here is your motherboard. Uh, this area over here, this plate will light up along with this area right here. All lights up. Uh, since this is an AMD motherboard, I got to have a Ryzen chip. This is the Ryzen 7 1800X. And uh, that should be pretty nice in there. Fit right there. Uh, for memory, I have the Corsair Vengeance LPX, 3200 megahertz, 16 gig of RAM. I can go up to 32 gig of RAM if I want to. Then I'm also got a Samsung 860 Evo SSD drive, 500 gigabytes. Windows 10 Pro, 64 bit edition. So let's go build something, shall we? Well, first of all, the case is a Cooler Master Stormtrooper case. It's in black and it's got 
plenty of room for a full ATX motherboard and a long video card that I currently have in there, which is a Asus a HD7970 and it's going to remain in the computer but I also have water cooling in this and I've got to clean that all out and replace all the parts, remove the radiators and all these other little pieces and parts and get it prepared for the new parts. And So we're going to tear this thing apart and put it back together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take as much stuff as I can out of here before I drain this coolant so I don't get it all over the place. And um, since I didn't put in a, an effective drain system, it's uh, probably the best way to do it without making a whole mess that you can't really clean up well and probably short out whatever you uh, have here in your computer. So I'm going to try and take as much as of it uh, as much of it apart as possible. Oh, I hate to see all this mint green go away, but it's it's got to go. So I'm going to start by taking all the RAM off the motherboard, and then I'm going to unplug the motherboard itself and plug in this adapter, which will help me pump the pump later on without powering the motherboard. Uh, taking off the screws for the video card and start unplugging that. You know, unplug all the cables and wires that I can get. Found a loose screw that dropped down in there. Get that video card out of there, Bob. Save that for later. So all these little pieces I can pull off now are great. All the little connectors, you know, everything that uh, is plugged into the motherboard. Hey, look, I broke the little uh, retaining clip off that video card slot on the motherboard that's no longer usable. So get all the ISA ports disconnected, get everything disconnected that I can, the fans and so forth. Um, now taking off the water block because I gotta basically disconnect all these hoses just to drain this thing and uh, clean off the compound here so it doesn't get all over the place. That'd be good. I've got to uh, drain this out so I'm gonna remove this reservoir a little bit and open up the fill part here to let some air in the system so I can drain it. See that was pretty dusty. It's pretty plugged. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, taking this cooling system apart. Here's the reason why you need to dust your computer case often. Uh, don't use a vacuum, use a compressed air because the vacuum will create enough static electricity that it will zap your computer potentially pretty good. I made the mistake about, oh, eight years ago just to see what would happen on a really old motherboard and, and it would never boot up again. Looks like after pretty good. So as you can see, you can see through the the grating over here where there wasn't any uh, fan. But over here you can't see anything. You can't see my hand through here at all. See uh, making a, a lewd gesture there maybe. You know you never know. And the last step here is to take out this radiator out of the bottom of the case because I got to drain that out as well. I got everything else drained out, 
and so this hasn't seen the light of day since 2013 or so and so it's pretty dusty in there and uh, yeah, be careful you're swinging those hoses you spill on the floor and uh, get the rest of that stuff out of there as much as possible and then uh, you know, oh hey I got this extra drive here this X dock you can put a two and a half inch hard drive in there and it you know I just want to copy stuff or format them or whatever or use it as an extra drive place now I get the fans out now the fans I have the hard drives going in one way for through the side of the case and an input fan coming in to the case itself so I don't just blow hot air into the case from the front it just blows right through from left to right and there's one hard drive cage out and start unplugging all the cables and pull out the hard drives uh, I've got a, a two and a half inch drive in there and a which is 750 gigs and this four terabyte uh, data drive now it's just a matter of oh just keep pulling stuff apart I gotta clean this case off because it is really really dirty I'm going to be breaking this down all the way down to the bare metal there comes the blu-ray drive and what's next oh yeah gotta take out some more uh, cabling and oh, take out the motherboard yeah that might be a good idea Bob yeah we should take out the nine screws that are holding this motherboard in and uh, take that thing out there's the dirty motherboard I have to take off this uh, this mount so I can put in my uh, water block hopefully uh, I used to have an AMD FX 8350 in here uh, around 125 watts so it was uh, pretty hot that's why I had to water cool it uh, so it's 2011 in here so it's, a, it's an old chip this is now 2018 now that I got the motherboard out I need to take the power supply out and it's uh, a little dirty pretty dusty only four screws to take it out pull all the power supply wires out through the holes in the side of the case I go to the behind the motherboard area and it's a good place to keep all your wires hidden and keep a nice clean view of the front of your case from or at least from the side when you're looking inside of it and it keeps the airflow flowing across everything nice and even uh, especially if you don't have any external cooling on your RAM and uh, video card uh, other than just fans so once you get all these wires pulled out it's uh, pretty much getting close to almost being broken down to the bare minimum gotta get all these other cables out of the way that go up to the uh, the control panel on top uh, clean off this old dusty power supply and set that aside because I'm going to reuse that and then I'm going to take the filter out, which is very dirty, and get to uh, this hundred, this uh, actually 200 millimeter fan on top. And to do that, you take off the the top. You have to kind of pinch these little tabs that are in there and pop off the cover. And then you can get access to the top and unscrew the four screws for the fan. And there's going to be a radiator going up here you could also put two 120 millimeter fans but a radiator is going to work just fine in this area and once that fans, oh there's the dirty fan, it's gone now and there's where the radiator is going to go wow almost done okay now that I'm 
got my case all cleaned up and some of my stuff is pre-assembled a little bit I'm going to start putting this thing back together now one of the things I had to pre-assemble was this radiator and fan combination um, the screws that come with these uh, fans or actually with this radiator to hook your fans on are meant for normal height uh, 80 millimeter fan or 120 millimeter fans these are narrow they're like uh, 10 millimeters and not not going to fit right because these long screws here are like a half inch too long and they were going to dig down into the fins on this radiator. So I pre-mounted all these. I put three quarter inch uh, screws in here, uh, number 832s. Um, it does kind of void the warranty on this because I'm not using the exact screws that came with it, which actually kind of screwed in better, but they're basically the same thread and for some reason it just you know, they eventually worked. So these are on here and they're, they're good to go. So I needed to put those on there and get it ready to install. So let's get to it. Well, as you can see, this case is pretty uh, empty. <laughs> I've taken everything out of it and all the all the rubbers out of it, all the covers and filters and everything else are removed so I can clean all the dust off. And so now that I've done that, it looks almost brand new and it's good enough for me. So um, time to put it back together. Well, now I've got to mount this radiator in there, so I'm going to put in couple barbed fittings. They're half inch barb fittings from Bits Power. And I'm going to crank those in there. Not too tight, but just tight enough so they ain't going to leak. And this is a low profile and low profile fan combination. It's a 30 millimeter radiator and 10 millimeter uh, fans. I wanted it nice and thin so that it wouldn't drop down and cover up anything on the motherboard you know kind of would prevent plugging in some cabling and so forth if it sits too low so I wanted to pre position that in there and make sure it fit then I put the control panel back in I screwed that all down and before I did all this I had cleaned off everything dusted it washed it whatever still get fingerprints but now you got to put in the back plane for the motherboard you got to pop that in there and get everything ready. Okay, I'm going to test install this uh, Asus uh, motherboard, a Crosshair Hero with Wi Fi. Now, since you said Wi Fi, it's got these two Wi Fi connectors on the back here. On the back of your um, back plane, where all these connectors go through, you got to punch the holes out in that plane because they're by default come covered so you just kind of push through the uh, through the front face and uh, pop them out and wiggle, wiggle them out and they come right out so we're going to test and see if this motherboard fits in there and I don't have any um, problems fitting it in Everything looks like it's going to line up just fine. And I got plenty of room up here for my radiator. And it's not going to hit my uh, motherboard at all. The, the other radiator would have hit if I had, didn't have a low profile radiator and low profile fans. So I still have plenty of room in here, but I got plenty of good room right in here to get the connectors in and so forth. Uh, so let's keep on moving on. Well, gentlemen and ladies, I have a major problem. I am not going to be able to use this water block with this motherboard. 
It's too big. Why is it too big? Well, you see where the CPU mounts here? Sure, I could put a, a different size in there, which, which would have lined up with uh, this mounting uh, bracket for this water block. But these items right here are in the way. This frame will go right over the top of those, and I'm not going to be able to mount the water block onto this motherboard. I thought this was going to work. I really did. Apparently I was wrong. Now i got to go buy a water block. I'm pretty much dead in the water right now. I can put some other things together, but I can't even put the motherboard on or the CPU or anything. I'm stuck. Well, time to go get some parts. To put the water pump together, you take the pump, got four holes there, put it on the bracket, whichever way you need to. In this case, I'm going to be putting it horizontal and mount it over the top of a 120 millimeter fan. And then the fan will go in the bottom of the case. So you take some uh, Allen screws that come with it, screw it into the bottom of the bracket or on the side of the bracket after you, after you mount it to your fan. But you can do it either way, it doesn't matter. Just probably a little easier once you orient your fan in the right position you know where it's going to plug in and your cable can reach that's when you do it. I had to redo it a couple times. And you just mount it in the bottom of your case. At least in this case you can do that. Or you can mount that bracket right to a, a hole pattern that you drill in through the side. Or you can put it on the bracket. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Now I put a half inch barb fitting on top for the inlet coming from the reservoir and then I got a T and a, a basically a valve for my drain system. Put a little cap on the other end that no hose is going to go out of and then I put another barb on the other end, twist them all together real tight and then install it into the pump. And I'm almost ready to go on to the next step, which is the motherboard. I had to go and buy a new water block. I'm, I picked up a EK Supremacy Evo AMD RGB version. And so we're going to be putting that onto this new motherboard. So let's get started. Well, here's the water block, the new EK Supremacy Evo. And I just got to take out this uh, bracket for a air cooler. There's two brackets, uh, four screws. Just unscrew them and uh, take them off. Now there's a plane or a back plane on the back of the motherboard. You leave that in place because you're going to need that for this water block because it's just going to screw right into it. There's no need to uh, replace it with a different size because this is made for an AM4 motherboard and uh, that'll work out just fine I think. Now it's good to work on a uh, you know a nice oh, piece of cardboard or something that's soft nothing that's electrically um, conductive like go uh, water you don't want to do that but you know you gotta you gotta do it you gotta keep kinda safe from static electricity as much as you can even though everything's good now we got to put this Ryzen 1800X inside and just make sure you put the pointed arrow in the right direction it's kinda hard to see on this motherboard but eventually you will get it in there um, just make sure you pay attention once it's in there, lock it down in place. And then you got to put about a pea size dab of thermal compound onto the middle. This is probably a good place to do it because it will spread out evenly. Uh, 
across the whole CPU when you put the water block down on top of that. Now this, I put it on there, it just wasn't quite lining up with the, the screw holes in the back plane on the, uh, where the, the water cooler is supposed to mount to over the CPU, but you just wiggle the screws around a little bit and it will go into those holes and you'll be uh, cooking with gas pretty soon. Tighten them all down in a cross pattern, you know, don't just put it on one side and then do the other side, just, you know, kind of make it even so it spreads out the thermal paste evenly across the whole top of the CPU. And then, there we are. We have, this thing is pretty much all done. Now i got to put in some of those uh, barbs again. They're all half-inch barbs. Uh, these are bits power barbs. And now I'm going to just kind of shove this, well not shove, that would be a little dangerous for my nice motherboard just to shove it in there. But I think I'm just going to place it in there and put the nine screws back in. Since I already had the standoffs underneath from the last motherboard, these line up just perfectly and screws go right back in. Now remember, you got to get those uh, holes out of the back plane on the back of that motherboard so you can plug in your Wi-Fi so they can go through the holes in that. Otherwise it just ain't going to go in very easily. Now to put in some RAM sticks, I got uh, the Vengeance LPX 3200s. Uh, I looked up the specs on AMD's website to make sure I got compatible RAM specifically for this. And I just put 16 gigabytes in, no problem. A lot of this is just cable management. I got all these to put in now. I'm not sure where these go. I know they go to the pump. Where do I put them? EK put the wrong instructions in with their pump. So I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to go to. So I routed the fan wires behind the motherboard and up right over the top behind the motherboard and plugged them right in. That's why I just routed them right there. I'll just bundle these up out of the way later on and we'll be good. And I put the power supply back in there, just slide it in there, put the four screws back in and you're mounted. It's really not that tough. You know, four screws. Woo! Challenging. Now the challenging part. I gotta take all these other cables off, probably blow some more dust off of them, you know, try to clean them up and shove the power cables for the motherboard through there and the video card as well. Gotta get them all cleaned up and routed. Well, now the fans work. You know that works. So that's good. Time to put the video card back in. Yeah, just slide it back in there, put it in that first slot. And uh, since I only got one video card, put it on the top slot. It's the best place for it. And put a couple screws in there, even though there should be three. I got uh, two is good enough for that. Uh, top and bottom, middle one, overkill. But as long as it, you get it mounted in there, and it's all snapped in, in the right place, and locked in, you should be good to go. Now, I've got to put in a couple uh, power cable wires. Sometimes they get a little uh, tough to get them together since they're split. They're both uh, plugs are eight pin instead of six, so you got a you got a six and a two pin. You kind of got to squeeze them together and get them in there. Now to put the reservoir in there, fit it in place. I'm going to keep it in the same spot. And uh, now to put some of that uh, hose in there. Measuring all the hose, to put them on all the fittings, you know, get the fittings in there, 
uh, put some hose clamps on there so you can tighten it down because some of the fittings are a little loose when you put that uh, flexible hose on there and so in this case I'm trying to line up how much hose I need out of the reservoir to go down to the the pump and so I'm trying to figure all that stuff out and it was a little tough because the pump actually is sitting you know kind of the wrong spot but I you know I had to make it work you know that, that's the whole beauty of doing these little projects is you you learn so much as you're doing them you think you got everything planned out but you don't but uh, you know some things are a little in cramped quarters if I had a better reservoir I probably should have used it well I got the loop in and I just gotta fill it always test your system and flush it out with uh, some distilled water so that's what I'm filling in here I filled it up as much as I could see where my problems would be see if I had to tilt it around and get fluid in where it needed to be using the pump turn the pump on and now you have the real fluid going in after I drained it all the system out and putting in this Primo Chill Red uh, it's some pretty good fluid and as you can see it's filling up the system I'm pouring stuff in the reservoir you know trying to get all the air bubbles out of it and everything else and then get it all pressurized and filled up enough so it doesn't have any uh, problems with flow and it looks good and here's those instructions for updating your BIOS just flashing it uh, this middle port down here at the bottom of the motherboard is where you plug in your BIOS uh, USB drive and uh, away you go and now I am flashing the BIOS Hence the white flashing. Little known problem was that since this is a Wi Fi version of the Crosshair Hero, uh, it's you gotta rename your Flash BIOS file to C6H Wi Fi dot cap instead of just the plain C6H which they put in the instructions because that will fail so that's what I am doing now flashing the BIOS and there it is with all the lights lit up the RGB colors going looks pretty neat and the computer's going uh, I've got my DVD player, Blu-ray player, it is going a little noisy. I don't really use it a whole lot, so it must have uh, it's got a little vibration in it. I'm not sure what happened there, but and it seems like my fluid seems to be um, locking up a little bit. I don't know, maybe just got to get warmer or something, but it should uh, start, should, that thing should be spinning a lot faster, it was earlier. But as you can see, I am installing Windows 10, and uh, got a little bit of installation time left to do, I've got 33% uh, done, so we'll see. Okay, I'm upgrading my motherboard. What's really weird is I have my backdrops of my model trains on here and I have not set anything up with any pictures or nothing on my on this computer. This all came from the Microsoft account that I have and it must have saved all my pictures out there somewhere and downloaded them and made my uh, backdrop. Man. Now I gotta reboot. 
but I have never seen that happen before. That's pretty good. There you go, man cavians. That's been this build of my computer for my editing rig for my YouTube channel. Now the biggest thing is, the main reason I did this was because Pinnacle Studio 21 was crashing and previous versions of Pinnacle were crashing. And I kept buying it thinking, oh, it's going to fix it in this version, but it never did. And so the only thing I could think of is I need a clean install. New version of Windows, none of this upgraded stuff from Windows 7, 8, 8.1 to Windows 10. You know, which is probably the reason why none of this stuff worked right. So, I mean, I couldn't do an audio dub over the top of my video and actually watch the video playing so I knew what I was talking about. You know, it kind of helps. You know, so I have to go to a previous version of Pinnacle, which would work, do my dubbing, and then open it up again in 21 to finish it off. It's crazy. It was unnecessarily stupid. But I was thinking that's the software that's a problem. So I needed a clean install. So if I'm going to buy a new version of Windows, I need, I need to upgrade my hard drive. So I got an SSD drive. Got, oh, I need to put, might as well get a new motherboard and CPU. This thing was running a little bit slow. My video editing is taking a long time to compile. And I wanted things to go a lot faster. So I upgraded. And I had to buy a cooling system and everything else. And the parts weren't quite fitting right in some cases, and then I have to take it apart a little bit, rearrange it, run the cables in, put stuff back together, you know, put it all together, and uh, it took a lot of time. So I'm not practiced and proficient enough to building a computer. I know how to do it, I know how to do it correctly. I just don't do it all the time and so it took a really long time to put this together. And this has been going on for over a week, you know, off and on, you know, waiting for FedEx to show up with my parts. So there was like a four day, three or four day delay in that. But overall, this whole thing took probably 24 hours of work trying to get software installed and, you know, figure out where pieces go especially for my water cooling, where I was going to put this, where I was going to put that, trying to plan it all out, took probably the longest time and just getting everything positioned and ready to go. So, <clears throat> this build is uh, done. It's complete. The only problem now is i got to finish loading software and making sure everything's working. So, um, i troubleshooting any other little issues. One thing I did have to do is I had the, 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 the Corsair 3200 uh, RAM. That, I think, was crashing my CPU and my motherboard a little bit. So I had to knock that down to uh, 3000. And so that's running a lot more stable, and I haven't had any problems since. So it ran all night and came up came up this morning and everything was good and running and just everything was fine so with that being said if you like what you saw here today comment down below give a thumbs up subscribe and share this on your social media websites and until next time in caveans stay on your board while surfing the internet bye